After making the jump to handhelds with Link's Awakening, the Zelda series would return to consoles a few years later. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time was released for the Nintendo 64 in 1998 and received universal acclaim. It's still considered one of the greatest and most influential games of all time, but I actually have very little nostalgia for it. With that being said, let's go over The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. The story of Ocarina of Time begins in Kokiri Forest, where Link is awakened by a fairy named Navi. She guides Link to the Great Deku Tree, the forest's guardian, who instructs them to break a curse inside of him as a test of courage. Link and Navi are too late, but before the Great Deku Tree succumbs to the curse, he gives them the spiritual stone of Kokiri Forest and tells them to find a princess at Hyrule Castle. After meeting Princess Zelda, she tells them about a thief named Ganondorf who is plotting to enter the Sacred Realm. Link agrees to search for two more spiritual stones, so they can enter the Temple of Time and reach the Sacred Realm before Ganondorf can. After returning to the castle with all of the spiritual stones, Link finds Zelda and her guardian Impa escaping from Ganondorf. Zelda throws the Ocarina of Time into the castle moat, which Link retrieves and uses along with the spiritual stones to open the door to the Master Sword in the Temple of Time. After removing the Master Sword from its pedestal, Link is sealed away until he's old enough to wield the legendary blade, but opening the way to the Sacred Realm indirectly allows Ganondorf to gain access to the Triforce and use its power to take over Hyrule. Seven years later, Link is awakened by the Sage Rauru, who instructs him to find five more Sages so they can use their combined powers to stop Ganondorf. When it released, Ocarina of Time was highly praised for its presentation, and while the visuals are very dated, the character models and environments are fairly impressive given the game's age. The performance is poor though, with a frame rate of 20 frames per second. By comparison, the soundtrack has aged surprisingly well, with quite a few incredibly iconic songs. In terms of gameplay, Ocarina of Time feels like a natural evolution of the 2D entries with a variety of new features and mechanics. Instead of a top-down perspective, the game takes place in a fully 3D environment, but it still has many familiar elements. The basic structure still revolves around exploring the world to reach dungeons and find helpful items like equipment or pieces of heart. The dungeons usually involve finding keys and new equipment to navigate a series of challenges or puzzles and defeat a boss to obtain a spiritual stone or rescue a sage. One of Ocarina of Time's main mechanics is the ability to switch between a younger and older version of Link. While the basic gameplay is the same for both, each version has exclusive dungeons and items. Items like the boomerang and slingshot can only be used by young Link, while the bow and hookshot are exclusive to Link's adult form. Similar to the Dark World and Link to the Past, reaching certain areas in the future requires completing specific tasks in the past, so it's sometimes necessary to go back in time by returning the Master Sword to its pedestal. Even outside of the main story, Ocarina of Time is much longer than the first three games. In addition to three main dungeons as Young Link and five as Adult Link, there are a few smaller dungeons with vital equipment. Along with pieces of heart throughout the overworld, there are also a lot of side quests for optional items, including empty bottles, wallets that can hold more rupees, and a stronger sword. Hyrule itself is also fairly large, so navigating the world on foot is somewhat time-consuming at first. Eventually, warp points are unlocked, along with the ability to ride a horse named Epona, making it easier to quickly reach certain areas. There are quite a few returning items and abilities with new attributes, Using different directional inputs, there are variations of the basic sword attack, including horizontal and vertical slices and stab attacks. Link can also perform a jump slash that's slower but deals more damage. Instead of increasing Link's defense or attack power like in other games, the red tunic protects him from fire environments and the blue tunic lets him breathe underwater. There's even a first-person view for items like the bow and the hookshot. Unlike in previous games, equipment is divided into two categories. Items can be equipped to the C buttons, making it easier to quickly switch between a few without having to return to the inventory screen. On the other hand, gear is only accessible through the pause menu, and consists of equipment like different shields, tunics, and boots. Certain dungeons require continually equipping and removing the iron boots and hover boots, so the gear system can result in having to constantly enter and exit the menu. As the name of the game implies, the Ocarina of Time itself plays a significant role. Throughout Link's adventure, he can learn a variety of songs with different effects. Unlike in previous Zelda games, 
Playing the ocarina is not automatic and requires specific button inputs to play the correct song. The song's effects include warping Link to specific locations, changing the weather or time of day, and opening specific passageways. Regarding the controls, Ocarina of Time is mostly fine, but can be frustrating. Swords and shields are permanently equipped to specific buttons, while other items can be equipped to three of the C buttons. C up can be used to switch to a first-person view, or get optional advice from Navi. The A button is largely contextual, and is used to interact with the environment or even dodge attacks in combat. While there's no way to manually rotate the camera, it's possible to recenter the camera behind a link or lock onto enemies with the Z button. For the most part, Ocarina of Time holds up well, but it definitely feels antiquated at times. Conceptually, I think it's a great game, with interesting level design and enjoyable gameplay. Most of my issues with it are elements that haven't aged well, like the low frame rate, the limited camera control, and the clunky menu system. In spite of its flaws, it's still a fun game, and an incredible first attempt at a 3D Zelda game. There are quite a few versions of Ocarina of Time, with a variety of changes and bonus content. For the Nintendo GameCube, it was released as a pre-order bonus for The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. This release also includes a new Master Quest mode, a remixed version with the same overworld but new dungeon layouts. The original version was also included in the Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition compilation, and was later released for the Wii and Wii U Virtual Console services. In 2011, Ocarina of Time was fully remade for the Nintendo 3DS. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D features reworked visuals and a frame rate of 30 frames per second, along with several new features. The touch screen can be used to navigate menus or equip items. The ocarina is now permanently accessible through an icon on the touch screen, and it's also possible to see the button prompts for each ocarina song on the bottom screen, making it easier to look up the required inputs. Along with two buttons for equipping items, there are also two item slots on the touch screen. The iron boots and hover boots are also classified as items instead of gear, so equipping them is much more convenient. There are also optional gyro controls for aiming weapons like the bow or the slingshot. Other additions include Sheikah stones that can be used to view hit videos, and a new mode called Boss Challenge, which is a time trial mode for each boss fight. This version also includes the Master Quest mode with a few additional changes from the original release. The entire mode is now mirrored, and Link takes double damage. Ocarina of Time 3D was actually the first version of the game I finished, and I think it's the definitive version. In addition to the smoother presentation and overall graphics, the various improvements and additions to the gameplay make it a much more enjoyable and streamlined experience while also staying true to the original. Overall, I like The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, but it isn't one of my favorites. Because I played other 3D Zelda games first, it felt less engaging and impactful when I first played it. Outside of some design limitations and quirks, the core gameplay holds up remarkably well, and I still think it's worth experiencing because of how iconic and influential it is. On that note, thank you for watching, and next time, I'll be taking a look at one of my favorite games in the series, The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask.